In this video we're going to go through the process of installing a Windows Server 2008 R2 server um, into VirtualBox to run as a virtual machine for the Exchange 2010 training lab. Okay so all I've done is just uh, boot up my virtual machine um, with the Windows Server 2008 R2 uh, installation disk uh, attached. I've just mounted that as an ISO file in, in VirtualBox. And this installation is going to be really simple uh, to go through. We're mostly going to be picking the default, so just skip through the language section here. So I'm happy with English and click on install now. And the version of Windows Server uh, that we need to install is the uh, Enterprise Edition and make that a full installation. So uh, Exchange won't run on a server call uh, installation, it, it won't run on that at all. And uh, we just pick Enterprise because that way we're not constrained by any uh, standard edition features. Um, we can use all the full set of Enterprise features available. So let's get through that. Simply accept the license agreement. Okay, and then just click on Custom. And uh, we've only got uh, one uh, drive here. I've actually done this installation before, so that's why. Um, the drives show up um, like that. So what I'm actually going to do is just delete the petitions that are already there on mine. I'll delete that one as well. Okay, so what you should have is uh, a 40 gig uh, of unallocated space or whatever size disk you configured. So we can just click next to continue. And now it's going to run through the uh, process of copying the Windows files and installing all the features and so on. This will take a little while, depends on how uh, powerful the machine you're running your virtualization on uh, or the hardware that you're running the server directly on. So it's something you can just walk away from if you like and uh, come back when it's finished. So after it's uh, finished installing and it's restarted, um, just go ahead and set your password, your administrator password for the server. Make sure you pick a, a good strong password, especially if you're planning to um, open up your firewall to this lab server for, for external um, SMTP or uh, Outlook Web Access. After it logs on for the first time, you'll see the uh, initial configuration tasks. Uh, control panel here for uh, Windows Server 2008 R2, but just get that out of the way for now. Um, if you are using uh, VirtualBox for your training lab environment, what you'll just want to do is install the guest additions, which is some extra drivers and things just to help the um, uh, virtual machine run a little bit better. And you'll find those in the devices menu of VirtualBox at the top of your, your uh, screen. Now it probably won't auto run uh, on your server just because of uh, um, typical sort of default server security. So what uh, what you'll probably need to do is just um, open it manually via Windows Explorer. And very simply, you're just stepping through a wizard to install some drivers. I just accept the defaults. And there are a few of these uh, prompts for drivers from Oracle Corporation, so um, I will usually just tick the box uh, so it only prompts me once. I don't have to answer it every time after that. Okay, and of course, because it's installing device drivers, a reboot is required, so go ahead and do that, and you'll find that um, after the reboot, the virtual machine should perform a little bit better in terms of uh, video and mouse performance and things like that. So once again, you'll get your initial configuration tasks um, console, and you'll just want to roll through each of these configuration tasks and get your server ready. So if you're just using trial software uh, for your training lab, don't worry about activating it um, right now, but if you're using a TechNet subscription like I am, you can um, run through that activation process. Set your time zone to suit um, 
your location in the world. So I'm going to go ahead and change mine because I'm in Brisbane, Australia. Now, this server um, that I'm building is going to be both a domain controller and an exchange server, and both of those uh, roles need a static IP address. So we'll go ahead and give that a static IP address on my network. There's no need for a DNS server at this point uh, because when you install Active Directory, it will install uh, the DNS server role on the server itself. Uh, I'm going to change the server name because that's uh, that default name is no good for me. I'll call it Exchange 2010 Server and just leave it in the work group for now. That's too long a name. I need to change that. Uh, I'll just pick restart later so that I can finish off this initial configuration. Uh, I always enable automatic updates for uh, security and remote desktop as well. Uh, because the you may want to connect remotely to the server rather than running it um, through the VirtualBox console uh, all the time. So if just enable remote desktop, that lets you uh, lets you do that. Now there's nothing else there that I need to configure, so I don't want to see this screen again. Um, we'll close it off and go ahead and restart the server. So let your server restart and uh, when it comes back up you can log on and at that point you can continue on to the next lesson.